Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining me. I'm Greg Swartz. I'm the big man half of the big man Weed Ram, and I have a very special Weed Ram today. It's not only a Weed Ram, it's a Weed Can, and we'll get to a, that in a little bit. I haven't poured it yet, but I'm going to momentarily. Uh, and the reason I have that is because my guest today is Shane McCarthy from Two Stacks. Uh, as a lot of you may know, I was just in Ireland uh, for 10 days. Uh, working on a, a podcast for someone else, but at the same time, kind of uh, meeting some people and uh, let's say, let's say, sowing the seeds for what will become a, another film about Irish whiskey. Uh, I mean, I, that's no secret. I've always said that we wanted to do a series of films, and you know, I've been a bit coy, and I know I've also gotten in a bit of uh, hot water with uh, some of my Irish friends for not doing that first. <laughs> so, um, the uh, but we are going to do that soon enough, and it probably would have done it by now if the world hadn't kind of slowed down considerably for the last couple of years. So without further ado, uh, I would like you to please welcome Shane McCarthy. Hey, Greg. Hey, Shane. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good since we last spoke. Um, nine o'clock on a Friday evening. So uh, great to be joining you guys. One of the funny things about me doing this every Friday is this really punches a hole in the productivity level of my Friday afternoon because I always drink while I'm doing it. <laughs> so I was just then I was uh, yeah mm -hmm. it was like Guinness time you know it was, uh, after a week of whiskey and blending you you kind of dial back a bit and have something a little more easier on the palate. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a stout later, but. So uh, before we get into a conversation, I would I would like your opinion as to which one of these I should open first. If I, I, uh, maybe I won't get to uh, the green one all day. Um, all I, right. I, if you're cracking one, I'll crack one with you. So let's do it. All right, let's do uh, it. Here's we always talk about the sound of opening a whiskey bottle. This is not what you're used to. There you oh, go. It's a nice, it's a real, it's a nice crack, <laughs> nice like slancha. It's it. It's a different one, slancha. You got a beautiful nose off the can even before the glass. It's a uh, yeah. Um, I've had a bunch of these. I mean, I, I had eight, I had eight of these. I'm down to these two. So I clearly, uh, I'm a <laughs> fan. <good. laughs> they were sure. They were <laughs> <laughs> I've had eight. I was like, uh, they were for your friends. <laughs> well, um, I, I didn't drink them all. I, we, we all had some, but, uh, I brought, I brought four back and had two already. So, um, no, they're, they're, they're solid on the, you know, they're the same, we spent a long time, and as I explained to you, when we work, and we still do work very closely with uh, Great Northern, uh, Brian, um, the late Brian Watts was very instrumental on in, in this blend. Um, I think we were the, the first to bring out such a complex blend. Um, there was more others that followed, but um, we did push the boundaries with bringing the peated malt, five parts to the blend cast strength the highest abv in the market this is a dial back version at 43 percent but um you know for us it wasn't about making a gimmick and putting a can to the market um it was about how do you make really different and premium Irish whiskey accessible so for these cans at five bucks it's like you're getting liquid on lips at such a low price point yeah yeah there we go so um it's funny having having you on here today with me. You guys are doing so much stuff that's so. Yeah. It seems like every step of the process you're doing things a little differently. So it's actually I'm going to shut up a lot and let you explain if you don't mind. Um, not only I want to talk about the whiskey, I want to talk about the can. <laughs> you know, I want to talk about your you know your business and what you guys are doing because I think you're you're really kind of at the the cutting edge of a lot of really creative energy going on in Irish whiskey right now. Yeah, uh, and that's it. It's funny and and uh, you know. It was it was only recently I, I had watched the first episode of Water and Life and you know you meet the personalities and energy especially behind Scotland which is you know our cousins per se Celtic cousins where you have these and you know watching Jim McEwen and, and um, Mark and the other personalities that have really drove the way for the Scotch industry and um, it was you know I don't know these personalities that, that much but there is a lot of synergies even. You know, even Jim reminded me of like a almost like a county GA coach where he leads the way. And he, and uh, for us, um, I think brand is person, and you don't get that that much in Irish whiskey. You have these big brands that are centuries old that are being run by systematic processes, um, and you're not getting the purity of what people want. And um, so for us, there there definitely is a purity in spirit in ourselves in terms of 
we love whiskey. We love we love Irish beverage. We love everything about Ireland. There's a lot of there's a lot of history being rebuilt as well, even culinary history that's been forgotten about. Um, and I think that's a, a big part of what we're doing. And so, no, the drama can is, is was just a first step in our evolution. But one thing that resonated definitely with uh, with when I watched the Waterfly show. Um, I've watched plenty of whiskey shows, but it was when Brickladic brought out so many releases when they first came to fruition, and and they said because we can't, and that, <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, it was kind of like you know to a degree when you're a bonder and you've got a matrix of casks and you really love lots and lots of different things, of course you want to let the world know about it. <laughs> and yeah, a little bit of that did, did resonate, but we you know we've been doing it for the last couple of years and um, the can is just basically everyone always talks about liquid on lips and uh, you know when you bring something new to a market you have to do tasting after tasting after tasting you have to go to cities and you have to go to states but if you can do that in a different way without having to put uh, you know by a dram in the can per se and um, you are almost doing that education multiple times over without without all of the, the time expenditure um, is what drama in a can was supposed to be. And it has evolved into so much more. It really has. Um, it's become something more than we thought it would be. We, like, we didn't set out to make it this sustainable package, which of course it is, it, and, and lighter and, and, and many more things. But we, for us, it was like, how, how do we make our beautiful, you know, hard grafted independent bottle in one of our first blends accessible to the masses and not when i say the masses it wasn't two three hundred people it was like how do we get it out to the thousands and we aim for ten thousand lips per you know within the first year you know we're well into the hundreds of thousands now so oh yeah and it's it's funny because it's like it's i mean you guys sell all the same whiskey in bottles correct i mean because I, I i saw these bottles they yeah, were there it's, in it's, 700s right it, it's this is in addition to. And I think here, this is the perfect example. Um, right, you're an Irish whiskey brand, Irish whiskey's grown. And you look at countries that have an appetite for Irish whiskey or Scotch whiskey, you go to Asia, Korea, Australia, and you offer them the bottle. And you said, this is uh, won lots of accolades and you know maybe you should try it and maybe you should give it a go. And we have got big partnerships that only want the can. Like, like but and then we'll progress with the bottle so to a massive extent it has gotten us a foot in the door and um, but it wouldn't have if we just had a kind of came out with a beautiful Irish independent bottle of, of blending and you know we we go in and then they're like oh drama the can that's really really different really unusual and these are you know guys that are very particular and who they work with and, and they choose to just work with the can. So I'm like, well, <laughs> it's in bottle too, guys. But uh, they're like, okay, well, let's let's just start with the can. But this is it's a it's a custom can, right? I mean, I've never seen a can. Yeah. It's a hundred it's a hundred mil can. Anyone who can't see, uh, no, it's a, yeah, you can see very clearly. It looks very miniature in your hands, and the, yeah, <laughs> that's, my, <laughs> that's my that's <laughs> my curse. And um, uh, it's yeah, the, it, it did take a long time. There was a lot of brainstorming around um we could have brought this out in your european metrics of the lowest is 150 mils or 125 150 but we were like who realistically who is going to want 125 or 150 mils opened and just there you know and i think the maximum that we could go to was the 100 mils so when we came across the measurement then we had the, the diameter is different than any other can in Europe as well. So it is custom. Um, but unfortunately, to seal the cans, yes, yeah, to seal them, you got to build the can in line to seal them. So, um, yeah, that was that was quite a journey. It's it's but it's you know, it's stackable, right? I mean, that's a big thing. It's is that it's so much more stackable than it is. Uh, bottles would be for shipping and stuff, shipping like airlines it's an absolute no-brainer um the thing with airlines is perception um we haven't got one to jump on just yet even though most of them serve two miniatures to most people 
but they can't be seen to serve you 100 mils of liquid. So uh. <laughs> really interesting because they're happy to serve two miniatures. Um, but at the same time, you know, two cans fill a lot more liquid space than four bottles. Um, yeah. So they're, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a no-brainer, but, you know, I used to compare it to when, and maybe, maybe it's not the right thing to compare it to, but in my mind, it was whenever corks turned to screw tops and people said no you can never have screw tops in wine you know that's just that's just not the industry um but honestly i i, I can't see i really can't see this this being a step forward um you know it's funny <clears throat> i wish to god i could remember who told me the story i cannot it was someone in scotland uh that they it was a distillery that when they started maybe it was ben romick because i know when they started releasing single malts they had to, they put a cork in it and a longtime customer of theirs said to one of the owners, you know, you're making my marriage uh, more difficult. And he said, why? And he said, because for 35 years, I told my wife I had one drink after work every day and I would go in the kitchen and screw it off and fill it up. And now she hears the cork and she catches me every day. <laughs> that might be difficult to keep back the, the sound of the can. Uh, <laughs> and the other the other piece is RTDs or ready to drinks are very popular. So sometimes people do get mixed up with like people think it's like a cocktail in a can and um, so we do try and place it within the Irish whiskey section and um, but again all the feedback is crack a can and people go wow this is different Irish whiskey than what I'm used to absolutely it's great I mean and it, not just it, forget about the can I mean, the, the the juice is great I mean it's not just a great presentation and packaging it's just you know it's really good liquid as well and uh, and I want to talk a little bit about that because you know I I you guys at Two Stacks you know what you're doing I I feel like you're just getting started because I sort of had a little bit of a laundry list of some of the things you're up to and I'll I'll, I'll shut up and let you kind of lay that yeah. out if you want yeah and and you know it, we, when you come up to the tasting room it's kind of sometimes it's a bit of a reminder that tasting room I'm always like the do do not touch because bottles go missing all the time we do a lot of limited releases but you know we we probably have been up or one of the most releases out of any Irish whiskey brand this year were well over 20. Um, you know, then you have the cans on top um, and that's within a 12 month period. But um, I think the biggest thing for us, uh, like as as like a, a kudos in, in what you're doing and a kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely going in the right direction was the Irish Whiskey Awards last week. I'm not sure if you've seen them. I did. Yeah, like that. that's a very, it's a very important part of the industry like people really hold it in high regard and the you know there's no entry fee it's like blind bottles go in and we would honestly it was and i don't think anyone knows this uh, on the last day like we we don't usually enter awards and on the last day we said ah oh, um i really think this pot still because we've never released a pot still i think i was mentioning it to you while you were there mm -hmm. so if we're going to enter, like, let's take on the big guns. Let's let's go to the top and go after pot still. Um, so we put in the Polaris 1.2, which was our first ever pot still release, and we won the category. And honestly, it was an incredibly humbling achievement. We didn't shout or, you know, it wasn't anything to shout from the rooftops. But it was, it was a kudos to say, you're the first Irish whiskey brand to win this outside of Middleton since these awards began. So you're doing something that the industry, not the industry, but like it's it's whiskey clubs that really love the whiskey across Ireland has stood up blindly and said, this is really good pot still. Um, so for me, it's exciting. It's exciting that this is where the industry is going toward. And this is what we may and can become. And, you know, we, we will just be in that, journey and that path we you know we may lead the way in some ways but we're not going to dictate it we're just going to say this is how we like to do things people can follow people can do their own things i think and hope they will because that makes it more exciting outside the box sure. of what we can become because you know we very much look especially at two stacks we've got a global look at things and um we're very proud of irish whiskey but sometimes I feel Irish whiskey can be a little bit insular in, in what's happening in the global whiskey space. And for us, we we put the telescope on a global sphere 
we don't we don't say oh this is what brands are doing here locally it's like well what's happening around the world like what's bourbon doing what's japanese whiskey up to what's what's australian whiskey up to and i think that's important because to evolve um as a brand and 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 just of what consumers might want and and i think that you can probably see that with some of our releases you know we have everything from maple syrup peated to uh you know a moscato 12 year old single grain or and that, that yeah I'm, I'm very excited about a lot of that stuff coming to market well, you know, it's funny because I, I see we've got some comments in the in the chat here, and I see that Connor said I think that the clubs and societies getting involved judging has been a fantastic step forward. And you know, from my personal standpoint, that helped us as a film. Like our when when we made a film, we weren't making a film during a pandemic, and all of a sudden we there were no uh, there were no film festivals to release it to. That's what was our plan, and so we reached out to whiskey clubs all over the world that were doing online tastings, and that's literally how we kind of got started. Was because we 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 went to the whiskey fabric, not the film fabric. Well, that's that's wow, yeah, and uh, yeah, Connor, you know, these he's, he's um, I actually was sitting beside him last week. I, I think if it's the same Connor, he was, you know, he's he's one of the key guys in the whiskey clubs. Um, them guys are the grassroots, and them guys are. They don't know it, or maybe I hope they do know it. Um, they're part of the movement as much as the brands are, because they are the cultural identity that turn around and change their cousin or their sister or their auntie uh, and tell them about this exciting new story from, did you know up in Connemara or in the hills of the morn that there's this thing happening? And uh, oh, yeah, it is Connor. <laughs> you know, these, these, these are these are the storytellers. These are the yeah. storytellers. And, um, you know, it is... The grassroots movement as you might call it but um from our perspective we we just keep doing what we're doing and you know you do work long hours and you you do you know there is that kind of iceberg moment where people see a little bit of the tip of the iceberg but you know there's been probably six seven years of graft and this is only really a period of a little bit of of shining light but um there's a lot more to come i hope and i think you've seen a little bit of it greg you know you we have a lot of vintage marsh bills laid down. We have a lot of we commission. I don't know if, if that's a big thing. You know, you can you can maybe educate me a bit in this, but do many people go in and fully commission marsh bills uh, across distilleries in Scotland? I mean, to the best of my knowledge, not really, because it's almost all just single malts. And so, you know, the, that, that, I mean, that was it. see that. Mm. And, and again, we are just naturally doing this. This, this is. Uh, you probably heard me saying it a few times. So we're very passionate about mixed mash bills. <laughs> and, uh, sure, yeah. It's it's a part of our identity. It's part of our heritage. It's part of our culinary heritage. And uh, you know, we we've got. And uh, you have the likes of Connor, but and Finn Finn O'Connor himself. You know, I was uh, speaking to him multiple times over the past few years, and even just this week about a couple of mash bills we're looking to do in Donegal. But the difference is what we have now is we've got distilleries in all these parts of the island that as a bonder, you can step in and this is, this is so present, like so fresh that, um, it's, it's, it's re- it, that's how exciting it is. Like we're, we're living the moment, but it almost means that your creativity can continue to expand all the time. Absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, that is what I am so excited about, about making a film in Ireland right now, because when we made the film about scotch, the scotch whiskey revolution, the single malt revolution was, I wouldn't say it was over, but it was well underway. It had started years before. Whereas I feel like right now, just having been in Ireland for 10 days, you know, there's such an energy going on. Everyone's doing new things and there's a camaraderie about it. There's a sort of, there's a, there's no sense of they're doing this. So we have to do it too. It's they're doing this. Isn't that great? Isn't that like, great? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, or what else can we do? But they're, the biggest thing that fascinates me is that the distilleries will well, most of them will hopefully, and a lot of them are, will dig into the archives. And, um, you know, a lot of them are, will not a handful are rebuilding estates that have so much history through even the famine times of Ireland. And, and ex- you know, a lot, a lot of them have been left derelict and, and, um, abandoned for decades. Um, but a lot of them are digging into the whole history aspect of what was and what can become or what we can't, may not lose. And um, so there is that kind of, I wouldn't say hanging on, but uh, there is a revival, a massive like energy to revive what we've lost a little bit. And, and uh, you've got to 
so much of it intertwines with history that, you know, we only became a republic in the early 1900s. So there, there was a lot that was taken off of us. And, and then when we're, 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 maybe this is why we're, we're maybe more ingrained, but we're still based up here in Northern Ireland. So we do, we do hold on a lot stronger. And I think we're maybe it, it, uh, yeah, the frequency is a little bit higher whenever, whenever you're, you're in Northern Ireland, cause you, you, you do feel that much more want an identity to be Irish. Um, so mm. there is, that, yeah, there definitely is that piece in me personally anyway. Um, yeah. So our friend Mark Pruitt here says, yeah, it's impressive to see Irish whiskey branding looking at the trends of global industry. I think there's a great potential for opportunities to be uncovered for future expressions. And, you know, that's, and that's even more so in Ireland, just by, by legislation than it could be in Scotland because of the mash bill, because of the variety of different grains. Yeah, and, stuff. Yeah. and actually, I was going to show that. this is, I held this up earlier, but I didn't call attention to it. So this is the mash bill of what we're drinking right now. Yeah, the, yeah you've got the grains and the casks. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think there's many out there giving a, a complete percentage breakdown of their, of their blend. Um, but any release we do, um, you know, we'll, we'll also tell you the distillery it comes from. Um, Oh yeah, there's Connor. All yeah, there you go. Lockyell, Lakeview, Actonville. Yeah, and you know a lot of these estates have been left derelict. Um, so it's exciting to see a reuse. And even um, I think another one is uh, Church of Folk, uh, the one that Bono is behind and Press Up Group. Uh, that's quite exciting where they're using you know ad adjunct grains and they're they're still purposely set up to be you know. And even though they've got a lot of funding, they can still be incredibly experimental. Um, so yeah, the, like to as a bonder, you're almost following distilleries' journeys as well. So you always have the magnifying and research glass on as much as as you might have. Yeah, and you know, I, um, I, it's it's funny because I get uh, I'm so excited to talk to you that I forgot at the beginning. I wanted to say, you know, if you could give us a quick primer on what exactly two stacks is and your role within it, because I, I think that some of the yeah. people who might watch this over the next couple of days may not know that. And also, I'll say that, you know, two stacks is available here in, in, in the States. I didn't look in every state, but I looked in Los Angeles and at Mission, you know, they, they had the big bottles. I didn't see the cans, but I also wouldn't know where they would have put them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in Wine More, I think, online. But yeah, it's in right. quite a few states, maybe maybe 30, which is great in such a small period of time. Uh, we import with high road spirits. And yeah, the the whole two stacks, it's funny. I was on a call with Texas earlier, and sometimes you forget because you just dive in to, to like, you know, what you're up to. Um, but dialing it back to who and what two stacks are, you know, quintessentially, we do not distill our own whiskey. Um, Bonder Blender. Um, independent bottler is something that it, I feel a terminology that isn't used enough within Irish whiskey. So we're we're proudly an independent bottler, and uh, you know we don't we don't hide behind anything else. Um, we're very excited. To me, the, the the prospects of independent bottling in Irish whiskey is some of the biggest outside of owning and running the distillery. Um, you know, yes, you can own an identity of single malt or an identity of single pot still, um, but being an independent bottler opens up a a, a foray of of, of um, prospects and what you can create. So uh, you know it evolved out of um, Ireland Craft Beverages, which was an export B two B company eight years ago. We set it up myself, Liam Brogan, and Donald McGlynn, three good friends. You know that um, work very closely together, and we all left our careers to basically um, get behind independent. Uh, craft breweries, craft distilleries, and and bring a true identity, or what we called a true taste of Ireland worldwide. So we would have consolidated what we seen was the best breweries, the best distilleries, the best cideries, the best Irish creams, and we would have put them into containers and sent them out around the world. And people got very excited because you're a one-stop shop of what Ireland, the new generation, or something that isn't being sold outside of the commercial brands. Um, and you know that that was very successful business and continues to to still evolve. But it 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 meant we grew up with all the new distilleries. Um, so like we were there whenever Acklinville was in its second for second year. Dingle, um, we grew up with them, so we grew that relationship with them. And then you know whenever we got together with Cologne Distillery and 
myself and Liam and Brendan, who also a very close friend of ours, four years ago, you know, Clone was before Two Stacks. Um, we we set that up with, with Brendan's vision and passion and energy that, you know, is a Trojan in itself and in, in, in behind what uh, revival of, you know, these these kind of ancient mash bills could be. Um, oh, I just, you know, when you speak about Cologne, it's it's just, it's an illegal zone. And, and obviously there's bias there, but I, I honestly am, you know, even when I was on with Brenton er, earlier, um, there's just an energy that you don't really get with, with many other craft producers. Um, and yeah, so that, that was a huge learning curve. And, and you know, uh, shortly afterwards, it, it just made so much sense for us to, to buy and, and start becoming an independent bottler. So two stacks, you know, the, it's it's very much non-traditional. You know, when you look at it, it's not trying to be an Irish whiskey. It's just trying to be a good whiskey. It's just trying to be a top quality, good sipping, great whiskey. Um, and we don't need to create this identity. Yes, it says Irish whiskey on it, but at the end of the day, it's it's it's, it's something that you can identify with. You can sit back and enjoy. Um, and of course, there's plenty of, of people that support it from Ireland, but there's you know, there's there's an element that, you know, we want to sit in the global stage and be identified. Um, th and I think for us, we want to push the Irish whiskey category further. Um, so that that's that's what we're, we're trying to do with Two Stacks. So when you look at it, like a lot of it is abstract and contemporary, you know, even the logo is abstract art. Um, it, it is derived out of Old and Dock Distillery. The two biggest chimney stacks or which was once the two biggest chimney stacks in ireland and the northern star which people used to navigate their way into ireland and to us this is a new navigation of irish whiskey mm -hmm. so it was it was very fitting and nice synergy considering that we work very closely with great northern based in and dock a very industrious town and um yeah that you know and all of the artwork and design aspects were very particular <clears throat> very particular well the it's it i've always a fond uh, a fan of saying that you know, and when we were th this was about scotch but it's certainly true with you guys as well and a lot of the places i just went in ireland is you can have a huge amount of respect for the history and the past but you don't have to live there you know and you can sort of strive you can you know you can be a fan and 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 kind of or or a student and still go forward into the new and you know there's yeah i, think, yeah, I couldn't agree more um yeah yeah like it, uh, it, dep it depends how far back in history you go as well it's a, it's a it's a very interesting area you know and i'm always continuing to learn myself but you know our history goes back an age but so does so does the ancient history so does you know it depends how far you want to look back in philosophy and yet you know we have learned so much in our whiskey um but we've also come so far in technology and advancements that of course we can modernize, of course we can push boundaries, but we also need to lean into our identity um, and where that came from. Um, and especially if you've got, you know, the protection around the category, then I do get that you can't evolve outside of it, but I also do understand the disappointment that we've been making pots to the whiskey the wrong way for so long, you know, for, for the, we think pot still whiskey is a certain flavor profile, which it does, and it still always will have. But we've been making it in a lesser period of time than the way we always used to make it. And that's where the unfortunate bit is. You know, that's where almost the exciting bit of Irish whiskey was, and that's what we want to bring back. And and, and I, I honestly don't think there is big pushback on it now. I, I think the whole industry is like, yes, you know, this this is who we are. This This is our identity. Yeah. And it it's it's funny because obviously there's a, a an energy about it that's bigger than any one group or one person or one company even you know but it, you can feel it sort of happening all over the place and and you know it's funny because Connor said, I posted that comment earlier said some uh, distilleries I have to be honest with you I'm a whiskey nerd I I have I won't say an encyclopedic knowledge of of Scotland's distilleries but I know them really really well and I and I can I'll never get surprised by one. And I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to get caught up in it. And every time I think I am caught up in Irish whiskey right now, it there's more. And then oh, they're new, you know. And it's sort of, it's sort of <laughs> happening so fast I can't keep up because, I, you know, I don't even know some of these. Um, yeah. And I've not been it, I've it, not been to plenty of them. But you know, it it, it does uh, it plateaus a little bit because again we're we're 
in a not a similar journey but it, yeah there is there is certain aspects that we we want to know if someone's doing something different or what's going on so like every year we're you know what i think the last 12 months it certainly hasn't went it certainly hasn't like you know you haven't seen 15 distilleries this year whereas two years ago you would have and you would have yeah. seen plans and plans so i think yeah there will and it is starting to plateau a little bit but um that's the exciting part of it and i, I think you know people get worried and and so they should you know there is the kind of vanity project side of it where it, it overnight there wasn't a thousand people that just became passionate about ash whiskey yeah. <laughs> the, the, there's obviously the investment side of it and um there's just there is a lot of single malt distilleries and and kind of yeah there there's there's this stuff happening that 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 i think will just at a level out in the future um, and, and you guys are you guys are bottling pot still and single malts yeah i mean i mean i have yeah. one of each in front of me <laughs> so. yeah yeah um so the brew can the single malt uh, we have that in 700 mils which is 40 percent double the still malt uh 50 percent triple 10 percent peated and again you know i don't think there's many Irish whiskies like that in the market um and why shouldn't there be <laughs> you know it's this sure. uh, this interestingly um we won a tender for Sweden with this whiskey about eight months ago, ahead of every brand that went in for it. So I'll not name names, but a lot of big brands went in. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, it, it went into the global whiskies. It went in against the top Japanese whiskies, uh, MacMira, the local Swedish distillery, um, you know, some of the new um, uh, European distilleries. And it is outselling every single distillery by 30%. It has become the fastest selling whiskey in Sweden. Wow. In, the, in the premium stores, which I just think it's kudos to, to where we're at and, and where, where, where we believe we should be. You know, like we didn't win with this triple distilled single malt. What, why would we? I'm a, you know, I'm a whiskey drinker. I just, this, this is way more exciting to me and way more yeah of a journey in whiskey and and i think hopefully it just does and it sits within the malt category greg it doesn't sit within mm. the Irish. you know it sits in sweden which is very particular it's all it's all government bought and owned so it's it's very nice to hear when when you take a bit of a leap and a bound that you know people are really taken to it and saying wow harsh whiskey is is really good <laughs> or yeah. it's you know it's it's this way it's, this isn't scotch like that that's what kind of is a lot of great kudos well you know um i remember we were shooting our film and we were at springbank and we weren't shooting this we were just getting set up and walking around talking and we were talking to their head of sales about competing against the diageos of the world or uh, i may not have been diageo but the big 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 players you know um and he said well we're small enough that when they do well, we do well automatically. We don't want to be them. We can't. We could never make enough whiskey to be them. But when they do well, when they grow, just enough glow comes off of what they're doing. That if if one out of every twenty people that's drinking, I don't know. Well, let's say in this in Ireland in Ireland's case, let's say Jameson, one out of every twenty people that's drink, says, "Well, what else is there out there?" Then that trickles down, and then that's the people. Those are the most curious people, and that's kind of you know that, the that's, real opportunity. That's um that's a very true synopsis i would say you know as much as we all kind of sometimes give out about the bigger guy um i think that's happened in Irish whiskey the, you know there is that a trickle effect um where you know people go well because of them leading the way in this market people understand Irish whiskey because that's where it starts it starts at the top of the pyramid what is Irish whiskey you know what what's it about and it's like oh Oh, Jameson, oh, that's nice. Let me try this other one. Um, the same way it happened in, you know, we grew up with the craft beer movement and same way it happens in wine and tequila. You start on a journey. So, no, I can understand completely what Springbank are saying. And, and um, you know, for us, it, it's about being that other choice, but uh, being that other choice to a degree where it's like, wow, it's, it's, it's really different. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. this is like, this is boundaries of great scotch or, or or great bourbon or you know what what's this about and then you know then they they start to engage with your brand because they're like 
I was there, but now I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then, and then usually there's no going back. <laughs> Cause <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and some of the, you know, I, I think a big part of the appeal is uh, whether it's the can or a bottle, it doesn't matter. It's the mash bill, like the transparency of the mash bill, as opposed to hiding behind it. Like it's some sort of, you know, for secret sure. recipe is, and it's sort of, this is who we are. This is what we're doing, at least for right now. Yeah. And no, I agree. That's the, the whole transparency aspect, the, that, that is just kind of bred within the ethos of the company. And I suppose it comes naturally, but it maybe is a big part of the, the kind of success of the journey and um, that people identify with traceability. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, that's something we're all interested in as a team, you know, um, the, the traceability, the sort of, you know, the, the QR codes, the, the blockchain, oh, the, you know, all that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, you know, one of the things that I've been meaning to do on this for the last few months and haven't done yet, and I'm going to do it today is, you know, um, you know, at, most of the people who know our film, at least have been around a lot, know Alphonse. And he, he's, he, you know, was with me when I met you and everything. So I asked him to join me today. So he's, he's been patiently waiting backstage while I try to sort of, uh, but I'm going to try to add him in here and see what happens. There he is. Hey. Yeah, now I'm going to hide. Yeah, hey. Right. <laughs> How are you, sir? Oh, there we go. There we go. Have a <laughs> Are you? Uh, hopefully, hopefully he has something to say. <laughs> yeah, I'll see uh, you later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I didn't, I didn't get to go. Shane went. I, Alphonse got to Ireland two days before I did, and therefore I didn't get to go to Dingle. Uh, he was that's that's the one I missed. Oh wow! Um, yeah, Dingle's a great, great distillery. One of the first, one of the first movers. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful part of the world, and um, yeah, we we've. Great friendship with Dingle. Um, along yeah, I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. It's a part of the world, but it's uh, quite beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, one of the my kids run cross country, and I, I was talking to one of the dads at the, my kids' cross country practice two days ago, Shane. And I, he was talking. He had just been in Ireland a few months ago, and he said he went to Dingle. And I was like, "Oh!" And, and he said the distillery was great. And he said, and then the next day we did this bus tour, and he said you honestly couldn't see the road; it was so foggy the whole time. And he said I kept being told by people this is one of the most beautiful drives in the world. And I, he said, all I saw was fog in the inside of this bus. Yeah, yeah. Ireland, <laughs> Ireland is very weather dependent. Uh, <laughs> even around where we are, I think you guys got quite a quite a good day, but um very weather dependent and uh you get it on a good day <clears throat> there's there's really nothing like it in the world that you know from my experiences anyway living in lots of different countries uh, yeah definitely have a yearning back home and dingles the same dingles oh it's it's breathtaking when you get it yeah. on a good day I, I have been to the dingle peninsula before but a long time ago like when i lived in dublin i was there but that was 25 years ago yeah um, no it's exciting dingle dingles Alphonse, you'll 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 say yourself it's 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 a great part, right? When when you were down Absolutely. there, yeah. It, uh, it we 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 spent uh, just a few days there and uh, managed to see uh, well a few of the sites. We did get a clean uh, drive around the Slayhead Drive, um, but otherwise, you guys were having some uh, yellow warning weather, so uh, you know it was it was gloom just and tucked, it, tucked into a little tavern with uh, some Irish stew. Yeah. And, Irish coffee and a couple of pints of pints of black. Yeah, stuff. luckily we had Foxy Johns and Dick Max and and um oh the the little bridge one. I, I I'm not even going to try to pronounce that yeah. one. Um, Great folks. Yeah, yeah, they, they kept us entertained. Yeah, good yeah. folks over there. It's a great part of the world. I know we we have a little project going on with Dangle at the minute. Actually, um, I think it's going to be a very exciting next chapter. Of, of the industry, um, hopefully in Q1, it's been boiling up for the last few years, uh, um, where we're kind of bringing together some of the new distilleries and uh, going to make some very interesting blends. So uh, yeah, Dingle, Dingle's good, good friends of ours, <laughs> and they've been making great whiskey for for coming on ten years now, I think. Um, I have sad news. I've uh, I've managed to <laughs> kill this while we've. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's the does that count as a, a bottle kill i don't think it's probably not enough but the day is young <laughs> uh you yeah, know so my my whiskey journey 
uh, began with Patty. Uh, you know, when I lived in Ireland, when I lived in Dublin, I, that's what I would drink. I would drink Guinness and Patty. And, yeah. Uh, and great, it was great. Great but I'm, I'm, I'm never, to this day, I'm never without a bottle of Patty in my cabinet. Always, yeah. I always keep one around. I think it is the kind of the cabinet bottle for a lot of yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> it was always the one you went to with a with, for your Irish whiskey or your Irish coffee, Patty in the Irish coffee. Or yeah, as a sipper on the rocks, you know, it's it's a solid, solid whiskey. Well, so um, one of the things that I got interested in just on this trip, really for the first time ever, was Pachin, and you know, I, and I brought some back with me, and I've got some more since I've been back here, and you know, and uh, um which I was surprisingly pretty easily able to find at least. Uh, I mean, Glendalock is the one I found here right away. Glendalock mm. watching. And, uh, but, but in, in any case, I, you know, I'm, it just seems like there's a new kind of energy around that as well. You know, that's, I realize it's only recently been official yeah. category. Yeah, no, for sure. It's um, yeah. The, there's actually the first Ireland's first watching festival is happening this Sunday in Dublin it's called watching mm. watching now. And uh, you've got producers all coming out of the woodwork, you know. Glendalock, they don't produce their own parching. Uh, I think that's West Cork. There probably is a bit of a evolution to happen in that space um, where the new era, which is really only the last two years, I would say, is incredibly exciting. There's massive synergies with Mescal. Massive. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's about the, the incredible taste of the purity of the spirit. Um, and the mixed mash bill, like that in itself is such an incredible spirit to drink without needing the kick of PX or the kick of bourbon or the kick of whatever cask influence. There is a, yeah, and, 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 you know, especially Cologne, when we set it up, it was, it was to be something that Irish whiskey hasn't been for a long time. It's to be distillate forward, to be, mm -hmm. let the spirit do the talking. That's what Parching always did. Parching was whiskey, you know, it evolved into whiskey, but um, Irish oats and Vulcan and these, these are very, very new, or I wouldn't say new, they're just resurged, exciting parts of our history um, that I believe are bigger than whiskey. It just hasn't been, it just hasn't evolved yet. And, and, and to me, it's actually more exciting than whiskey, it really is. There is no comparison to this moonshine world. And, you know, there's a narrative that was put out there to scare people. Irish parching is ours. It's like it was taken away from us. It was it was a culinary identity taken away from us. Um, we always used to liquidize our, our, our grains or whatever surplus was left over. And we had our pot stills around the mountain that we always would have made these beautiful distillates. Um, and then there was uh, obviously King James came over and they put twice the amount of tax on parching because they wanted to outlaw it. And so this education piece, and that's what I was getting about earlier, these new distilleries are reviving what was taken away from us because otherwise they wouldn't have cured. You know, they're, they're digging and being like, oh, really? Well, really, this happened to us? Or, oh, well, what happened to language? What happened to oh, we should bring this back, or why is this sitting to rot on a tree? Because this is what's happening in Mopachin. So um, it's a cultural movement, and you're at the very beginning of it. You really are. It's, um, you, you know, there's your, your exemplar. The, the first ever Pachin Festival is happening in Dublin on Sunday. So that's very exciting. And I don't know, I, I, that, that, this is my take from living it, but I'm curious in how you found it and experienced it as a drink. Well, I'm new to it, admittedly, and uh, you know, um, but uh, I was really blown away on this trip because I tried Brendan's, I yeah. tried, you know, at Cologne, I I tried that, and I also tried uh, the Bon and um, Mad March Hair. Um, I didn't I, actually. I didn't even try the Glendalock. I we when we were there, we were drinking whiskey and, and gin, you know. We, but uh, the uh, I'm, I, there's so much more to it than I ever thought there was before. I had a bottle. 15 years ago, a friend of mine went to Ireland and came back and brought me a bottle as a gift. And I don't even remember, uh, God, I can't remember the brand of it right now. I, it, was, it was whatever existed 15 years ago. And I don't think it was actually, it was like an earlier iteration is, um, I don't know. Anyway, I didn't, it, it wasn't very palatable. You know, it was yeah. very, very harsh, you know, and yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Um, and it was, but this was a completely different experience because we went to 1661 in Dublin and we were drinking all kinds of different pachin and different pachin cocktails and stuff. And the, like, I think a big part of what has to be said is 1661 won the best cocktail bar in Ireland. And 60% of its menu is pachin cocktails. 60%. So that in itself has to open people's eyes to be like, hold on a minute. What is the base on, of these cocktails? Yeah, and it's like, what I've been drinking? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, what uh, do I get was, from? After the awards last week, we went to 1661 again. They've got this beautiful new menu. And um, there is so much you can do with parching. They're, it's such a fiscus and, and beautiful liquid when it's done right. Um there are bad parchings out there, you know. I'm not taking away that it's it's a brilliant in every degree. The same way there's bad tequilas out there, there is this kind of, you know, it it, it almost verges on a vodka. Like that isn't where parching, the premium parching is. But when you do find your premium parching, uh, yeah, it's like, and I'm a big fan of mezcal and tequilas, and like, Me too. You, can, you can sip it. And and I do think Cologne is is up there with an example of the. They're Balkan. I don't know if you tried it while you were Yeah, over, I did, it, yeah. It, it's one of the most important spirits that has been created in the island in, in over 100 years, I think. You know, that that was always the the thing that you brought to an Irish wake centuries ago. Uh, there's Liam in Bunratty. Yeah, there you it, go. It, 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 it was Bunratty. Well, as soon as he said it, I, I, I didn't say it because I wasn't sure. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that was it. That's what it was. I, yeah. and, well, you met you miss Liam. Liam's one of the co-founders of Two Stacks, so uh, he's on tonight. Ah. Ah. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he's he's a he's a party man. He enjoys his party. He's probably sipping him one now. <laughs> um, the uh, I, the pachin that I had there this trip was, across the board was fantastic, and and just had so much going on. And and it was it was different than anything I'd tasted before. It was like a new spirit, you know, and it was. Oh, I'm glad that you said that, Greg. You know, and that's the reason I asked the question. It's like, you know, I can I can harp on about how excited I am and why, you know, I think it's more exciting than whiskey. But to hear people that have been in the industry, you know, to hear their opinion is almost what counts more importantly. Um, and you know, it's it's gonna take time, but I I, I think it's 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 an incredibly exciting uh, part of, of what's happening in Ireland. It feels to me like uh, it's almost a part of a, it's almost a part of like, it, it, well, you kind of referenced it yourself. It's a bit like Gaelic, the language, you know, it's, it's this sort of resurgence of this, this almost lost thread that hasn't been in it. And there's a sort of pride in it. That's oh, kind of sure. um, and the same, pervasive. A, the same with their foods, you know, that they're, and, and to me, it, you know, I didn't know about this, you know, I grew up with what I was put in front of me. I, it's still a learning curve for me um so i get excited when i learn and hear and you know and and uh you know the parching part is um exciting but also quite sad in terms of it's been how much has been taken away and outlawed um it's 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 quite disappointing that and then whiskey has become such a, a behemoth that they almost don't perhaps want it to be what it can become um so that that's something that um and but then again, now it's so known again, and um, I think if people and and industries start to push back, it'll only evolve and make it shine brighter. And um, so, yeah, the the fact that there's fifteen parching producers coming on Sunday it says a lot, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's well. There's two questions. One is mine, and one is Connor's, which I'll get to in a moment. But the um, my question is the. There, there seemed to be that a lot of the new distilleries in Scotland, what they would do is they would sell gin until their whiskey would mature. That was that's how you pay the bills. But in Ireland, it seems like at least some of them are doing pachin because you can, it does, you know, it's and and if not that, then it's sourced whiskeys or other. It doesn't. I yeah. know there's a lot of gin, but there's doesn't seem to be. It's not everybody's doing a gin now because I think that that the gin yeah. market's probably pretty saturated. It's plateaued, and some people are experimenting with rum and. Um, yeah, some people are kind of doing sourced whiskies, which some kind like the sourced whiskies piece is very interesting because it's a bit of a roll of the dice. Um, you bring out a brand under someone else's whiskey, and then you bring your own whiskey out, and then it either becomes two brands, which is fine, or where do you what do you become? Like what what was your true identity originally? 
and it's something that hasn't maybe happened as much in Scotland and it's something yeah it's it's only really happening again it'll it'll play its path but um yeah the the other side is departing but I wouldn't say anyone is championed apart from maybe Boylock and, and Cologne you know it has been a, a decent percentage and Mikkel as well of their output you know I think new distilleries maybe less than a week of their whole year production might be a parching, you know, yeah. so they, they certainly haven't like, they haven't championed it or they haven't like went because everyone has a fear factor. Everyone is like, Oh, will you do it first? And, and then if it starts to work, then, then maybe I'll follow suit, you know? Um, and you have, um, you smuggling none that launched in, in the USA last year. Um, and that's, that's quite an exciting or new journey for someone to take such a, you know, a big uh, kind of step into the belief of what Irish whiskey or Irish parching may be. Um, even you look at the Dead Rabbit Bar in New York, you know, I think them guys always wanted to make parching, but they, they needed someone to make it for them and they ended up making whiskey, uh, you know, because they didn't want to take the risk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now they got the festival to back them up. They could, you know, probably take a little media out of that and uh, and grow it. So here's the other question, and I don't, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Is it scotching? Scotching? I don't know. Well, you'll have to explain that. What, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. No. <laughs> um. Well, there you go. I'm glad. Now, now I'm in good company. I'm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> you Connor's reached the, the pinnacle. You made it as far as you can learn, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm glad that you guys got the TS botching because. Yeah, I don't. I don't know uh, how where you were before. It. Here we go. Irish whiskey, milk, honey, and spices. Uh, I and, and Connor says, "Ask Fanon." Well, I don't have access to Fanon today, but I'm going to yeah, try to get him on to here. Liam, Liam, Liam's yeah. got good knowledge <laughs> as well. Yeah, he's he's more than I do in a lot of aspects. So uh, yeah, the, all right, milk, honey. I'm, I'm not familiar. Um, but do again, you know? yeah, I can't see that evolving as a category but i can i can't see parching evolving eggs butter and beef broth <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right Good. Um, actually connor uh, just uh while you're out, <laughs> if you can get me a sample of that then uh that would be great <laughs> in can. that sounds like uh eggs butter and beef broth that's I don't know, interesting it's, like a yeah. bit of, it's a savory <laughs> Uh, years ago, um, uh, Charles McLean, the, you know, the great Scottish whiskey writer Another great was talking, was yeah. talking to me about basically what would have been Pachin was, you know, unaged whiskey back when all whiskey would have been unaged, you know, and, and he said, you know, and I, I never thought about this specifically before, but he said, put yourself in the mindset of someone in the 1500s or the 1600s. He said, you live a very remote life. You have no electricity. He said, your entertainment is entirely going to be singing or music. Your family may own one book, in which case it's a Bible and it's in Latin and you can't read Latin. Almost everybody is illiterate, you know, uh, because it, literacy hasn't become a thing yet. And he said, and then in the winter, it gets dark by 3.30. You work 12, 14 hours a day. He said, you know, this is really a much more important part of your surviving the winter and enjoying life at least a little bit than, than it ever would be than people think of it. But they don't think about all the other things you have to remove from entertaining yourself or sort of, you know, ha enjoying your off hours. <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 that's it. And like, yeah, a comforting drink to a degree. Uh, yeah. Cold winter months. Um, yeah, that that does make complete sense, you know, as far back yeah. as, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. There is a, there is great tales, and you know you've you've got some of the great monks of uh, Irish literature. You've Colin Bannis as well. You know he's very famous as well. That uh, spread a lot of a lot of uh, yeah, the literature across Europe, and there's still monasteries. And um, so I think there is incredible knowledge that is still to be known, um, and is is still is still being revived. But a big part of it is is Finon. You know he. He's put a lot of legwork in, in, in. Oh Sweden. yeah, you know, and, and it's great. It really is. Like I, I don't think people realize at the moment how important um, his uh, his kind of contribution has been to the, the redirection of the industry. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, um, it's funny because I asked Fanon if he knew Charles McLean and he said when he goes to Edinburgh, he stays with them. Like they know each other quite well. And yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like they're a bit kindred spirits, just of a different generation, you know. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. Finna, yeah, it is. And I think Finnan's writing a, a book at the moment and a very, very interesting piece of he's trying to get a bit of symbiosis on the past, but also how it's evolved into now. Um, so it's like what was, but what is. Um, so that'll be very exciting. And he said he's locking himself away for six months. So it'll be interesting come May time next year, what, what comes out of that. But he's working with a publicist and finishing off his, his final uh, thesis, I believe. <laughs> so that, that should be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and, you know, maybe I mentioned this to you when we met, but, uh, you know, I, Charlie McLean showed, showed me something he's working on in a book about the very origins of distillation of any sort in the world. And there's a whole section about a monastery in Ireland that had, yep. th and there's all these stories about a tree. Did I, did I tell you about the tree? No. And no. There's, it's only referenced that there was a tree that would produce this magical sap. And anyone who drank this sap was, was full of the spirit and, and elation and all this. And he said for hundreds of years, people just thought it was a myth about a tree. And he said, the, the, scholarship around it now is changing where people are thinking that it, the tree was a metaphor for a still <laughs> and uh that, that it's, it's sort of um a bit a bit making people think again about uh the origins of stuff uh you know just how old it might be right and uh yes. and I, I i wish i could remember where the monastery is and i know it was in the north um right. but i but i don't remember where because it was part of the lordship of the isles and the mcdonald's and and you know yes. so Yes, there's still a lot of digging going on there. I don't know. Yeah. There's, yeah, I wouldn't say there's a there's like a, a fracas between Ireland and Scotland. I think we both the Celtic heritage has you know been ingrained in whiskey through our through our history. Yeah. We don't really fight over who invented it first or whatnot. But uh, there is there is kind of a, a interest in in where it did you know originally derive from. Um, so the more knowledge that comes in it, I was going to actually say the tree of life, Brehon, Liam beat me to yeah. it. That obviously Brehon laws and the trees and were a very big part of Irish culture uh, during the 15, 1600s. And, you know, it was, uh, it was part of our religion, almost um, the trees, uh, maybe something that we've lost to a degree, you know, being, being at one with nature. Um, that was, that was a big part of, of who Ireland was. And yeah, the tree of life, there's, there's a great brewery, Brehon Brew House, who we uh, collaborate with in our Smoke and Mirrors release. They're the guys that do the the beautiful stouts with the soft water of the Drumlin yeah. Hands around Monaghan. Uh, I've not had it, but I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the Tree of Life, there's, there's, yeah, as you can imagine, there's reams of, of archives of history um, over the centuries, but that's certainly a big part of our identity. Well, it's exciting times, and I, I, you know, I think Alphonse. I'll speak for Alphonse. I know we both are eager to get back and 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 start really shooting with our crew and and kind of trying to find the story at the center of this because, um, you know, when when we made the last film, we didn't set out to tell Brooklady's story for, first and foremost. It was just a story we identified that was really compelling, just as a story, as well as the whiskey being compelling. It was it was both things, you know. And in Ireland, I just found so much creative energy everywhere that it was sort of an embarrassment of riches. You know, it was like there's too there's so much <laughs> going on that yeah. you got whiskey, you got new distillery. Wait, what's this other stuff? I get, now, wait, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That was uh, that was very, very great to actually, you know, hear your interest in parching because it's something that we've been banging the drum on quite a bit and um I think it it is the the kind of trickle effect of whenever other people become knowledgeable of like what this was and could be, um, yeah, the, I, I think that's where it evolves. So, so um, so Shane Keith Duncan is a big supporter of our film uh, in Scotland, and he's he's always tunes in every week, and he was late this week, so he's gonna he's gonna send some whiskey to you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it, better be, it better be the finest scotch to compete with the single pot still. Unfortunately, I think he means rain. He mean, when he says oh, tomorrow. Oh, meant, sorry, I get mixed up. Uh, well, no, it's uh, raining here. It's <laughs> here at the moment, Keith. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll reuse it up in the hills if I'll, I don't. I'll tell you what. I'll take we'll take the rain here. We've got <laughs> precious little of it here. Really, it's it's quite dry at the moment. 
Well, it rained a lot, a lot last week, but um, you know, that's, that's the first time it's rained in a year. Point. So, you know, uh, hopefully it's going to rain again soon, but it rained a ton last week. Oh yeah. Good man, Keith. Oh, nice to meet him. I thought he meant he was sending over some scotch as I got, right? Good man. <laughs> no, I thought he did too. At I first, wish. then I reread it. I mean, he's just, yeah. No, as much as we share whiskey, we share rain as well. We're, yeah. <laughs> we share a lot of rain together. <laughs> well, uh, Shane, thank you so much for your time and expertise and insight. And I, you know, I'm, I'm such a big fan and I'm so glad Ian, you know, connected me with you guys because it was just, uh, you know, when, when we were coming there, I, I reached out to a few people I knew who I really respected their, their sort of taste and history. And, you know, and what I did is I said to people, people who know what I'm doing, who, what we tried to do with this last film, know what I'll like, because it's, it, you know, it's, it's not just what I like. There's a whole team of us and, it, and I've tried to, it's not just like some ego trip, but at the same time, it's like, we, you know, we're, we're looking for really exciting stories and really exciting drinks, you know? And yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I think you've lost well, lots of great stories to tell. Uh, Liam <laughs> says, uh, waiting on the Canadian upstate New York snow. Unfortunately, Liam, um, you got on Monday, on Monday, I'm flying to Montreal where there's, you know, 50 centimeters of snow. And then I'm driving to upstate New York uh, where my in-laws live. So, I mean, I see, I say, unfortunately, I'm looking forward to it. I love the snow. And that's my least favorite yeah. thing about living in Los Angeles. If I'm honest, I miss it, you know. Yeah, um, well, I'm sure you you guys will meet Liam on your next trip back as well. He, uh, he uh, was caught up with the kids that suddenly, but he would have been there if, if, uh, if he wasn't, hadn't got his hands tied. Well, when we come back, we'll be there for a couple of weeks. So yeah, you know, um, you'll, you'll get sick of us. I mean, we're not going to bug you for a couple of weeks. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe in the evenings after you're done shooting, come join us for for a, a, a dram on a, on a Guinness. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We'll Absolutely that. love it. Yeah, no, great stuff. Well, thank well, you guys. Always a thanks. pleasure. And, um, yep, and have a great weekend. And hope you see you Ireland very soon. Slancha. All right. Enjoy everything. I'm going to finish this now. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Cheers. See you guys. Slancha.